Everybody. Welcome to the Secret City Salon. <clears throat> so glad to have you all here and very excited to uh, move forward with this exciting new program. It's a monthly program for donors and members designed to connect our artists with community and also to uh, provide our community exposure to some of the extraordinary artists and performers from our community. Uh, those of you who are here know most likely that <clears throat> tonight's featured artist is uh, Leah Koloff. And Leah is a very important and special member of the Secret City community. And uh, Leah has been a, a member of the Secret City band, I was thinking this morning, since before there was a band. There were times when Leah was the band um, in some of the early services. Um, and has continued through the years to be a very important and vital part of our community and of the shows. And then when we started moving the shows up here for the Woodstock revival, Leah became part of the Woodstock scene up here and performed a couple times at our summer art revival. I'll give you a very brief overview of Leah um, and then we'll talk about her work and her life in between her songs but Leah is a classically trained musician who has coined a word for her music. She calls it clunk, which is classical plus punk music, which is a great descriptor of what Leah does. Uh, if you saw the Patreon note I sent out today, you'll know that um, her most recent performing credit was, uh, she was part of the seven piece onset uh, music ensemble for Oklahoma on Broadway that, um, very fabulous, fantastic, and disturbing reinterpretation of Oklahoma. And uh, she was with the show at St. Anne's Warehouse and then with the transfer when it went to Broadway. Prior to that, uh, the year before, um, in performance work, 
she created an original piece called This Tree, which was based on an album of the same name. So she turned that album of songs about her family and family history and ideas of family and inheritance um, into a music theater piece that was then part of the prototype festival, was commissioned by here and was generously supported by the here uh, resident art program, HARP is the name of that program. And uh, that show ran at the prototype festival last winter, 2019. So um, without any further ado, this is the first song will be the title song from that show and the title song from the album, This Tree. Take it away, Leah. This tree. 
this tree is cracked We could not keep it green Wow. It's such a great song and it's so great to hear it. Uh, I love this song and I love this music and this world that you've created. Um, <clears throat> do you want to talk about this song? What's the, where this song came from? I'm going to scoot a little closer. We lose your mic when you sit oh, close okay. like that, Leah. All right. So I'm going to do this. How about that? I'm a little closer. Um, so this tree, well, the show is about my family, but it's also about the struggle that I went through in order to create a family. Um, so this was really an expression of feeling barren and uh, bereft of um, the opportunity uh, to, to have children, basic. I mean, that's, you know, um, the show was about my family, but also about my struggle to uh, have a child. And then, you know, like, uh, and, and come to terms with it, really. What, you know, come to terms with the disappointment of where I ended up in my life, which was feeling very, um, you know, bereft and I didn't get what I wanted, you know, so, um, so this is, this song's really a cry, you know, a cry about that, like, you know, finding yourself in a place where everything seems dead, um, and, um, yeah, you know. How is it living that song right now as opposed to when you wrote it? You know, as I was playing the song, I was thinking about how, you know, if I didn't know what the song was about, I would think that it was maybe about this time that we're going through and thinking, you know, the, where we are as a country. You know, you know, is it too late? Is it too late for us now? I mean, that's, you know, that's part of the, the, the words in the, in the, um, in the middle, is it too late? Is it too late? You know, uh, roots exposed for all to see. Um, so I think, you know, it, it really is about finding yourself, you know, in a place of, you know, is there any hope? Um, you know, and it's sort of the darkness of, the, of feeling that way. And, um, you know, I, I think that that's, uh, you know, <laughs> kind of, you know, I feel that way now about our country. So, you know, is it too late? Can we, can we bring, can, you know, the roots are exposed. Can we now bring it forth to something new, to something better? Is it, it's, I find it so fascinating and powerful how our personal uh, stories and our personal lives and our personal experiences with our families are dovetailing with the story of our country, right? And the story of this moment. And I really felt that when you were playing the song. And in addition, just it feels incredibly prescient about the environment, right? And about yeah. the planet and about the earth. And um, 
it's wonderful when a work of art works on all those different levels so successfully. It's really beautiful. Thank you. I yeah, I, I I mean, I do think, you know, it's there there is such a connection between our intimate lives and how they expand out into the universe. It's all it's all the same, you know. It's it's um which is we're finding right now. I mean, you know, the int what's what's intimate in our families is reflected in society, is reflected in our world, whatever's happening. Um, it expands out. And it's also such a great reminder that that's one of the main thing, things art and artists do for us, right? Is yes. make specific these really sweeping issues and challenges and problems. Hey, so let's play another song. We're now gonna play, um, also, uh, we'll be taking people's questions. If if you have something you'd like to ask Leah, uh, you can say in the chat that you have a question. And then when we come to the next break, we'll uh, bring you in and we'll, um, we'll talk to Leah directly. Um, this song is Threadbare Funeral. And this is off of an album by Lucibel Crater, which was Leah's band. Um, when Bobby and I first met Leah, this was her main music project. It was a band. Um, and Bobby went to see them perform. I'll never forget it. He had told me about this new friend of his, Leah, and he's like, I'm going to go hear her band play. I have no idea what I'm going to. And he came home that night and he was like, oh my God, this woman is just like a rock and roll goddess. He was so turned on by your performance and your talent and your, uh, your Leah-ness. Um, so this is called Threadbare Funeral. And Karen, hi, Karen. Karen is producing and engineering our show. So glad to have Karen here steering the ship so capably. Um, Karen will now play the recording of this song, Threadbare Funeral, off the album. The Family Album was the name of the album by Lis Lucibel Crater. Here we go.
Wow. It's, um, it sounds so great, Leah. And I love the, uh, I mean, I don't know, is that, is that a motif that you are aware you're working in? Like music about your family? Yeah, I, you know, that was that, yeah, it de definitely. I mean, that, that album came before this tree. And I think that was the start of my obsession with thinking about family and, um, you know, all, you know, the ramifications of that and, you know, the connections out of that. Yeah, it was, yeah, it's definitely, it's been a preoccupation of mine. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm over it. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's such a, um, well, it's rich territory, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, every, you know, everything sort of comes down to that, but I mean, you know, the idea of family, even, um, you know, outside, as it, outside of just the families that we grow up in, but you know, the families we create, um, communities. Yeah. But you know, those primary families, like that's, you know, that's, I, I, I think I'm fascinated by it because, you know, that's where we really learn, our, uh, some of our main conditioning. <laughs> like about, you know, how we're supposed to be in the world, what we're supposed to be like, who we're supposed to be, you know. So, um, you know, and it, it almost feels like then, you know, the rest of our life we spend picking through that and trying to figure out what, what of that we want and what of that we don't want and, you know, uh, correcting whatever you know, things and, um and also, you know, I think I'm I'm of an age now where I can actually also appreciate, you know, the things that I've gotten as well from from my family. It's not all, it's not all Sturm und Drang. There's also <laughs> some, there's also some maybe joy or love that comes in this work now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I you know. Um, when I was writing this tree, because there was all these stories, the first stories that I wrote were uh, were really um, like looking back on my childhood very fondly, and you know, kind of um, uh, you know, really the the night the really nice aspects of my childhood, and um, you know, kind of a romance around them, and you know, like that was easy for me to. It's easy for me to think about those things and then you know then I started digging a little bit deeper and it was like oh family secrets and all of the other stuff um but you know it's all mixed in you know I mean it's all mixed in there's the difficulty but I mean hopefully I guess I mean some people's you know hopefully you got some some goodness there as well you know and I yeah. did I did you know. Are you, um, did you ever see that Louise Bourgeois retrospective at the Guggenheim? Yes, oh my God. I, I was just her. thinking when you said that, that your work is evocative in the way that her work is. And, you know, she was in her 90s at the time of that show and much of the work was very recent. And she was still working out stuff that happened in her family home when she was like five, right? I love her so much and I loved that show. And when you got, was it the Guggenheim? When you got to the very top, it was her most recent work. Yeah. And it was all of, she started working with, with fabric and creating like these dolls. And I was, I, I mean, I just, I, I couldn't, I, I, yeah, I'm in, I'm in love with her work. It's, it's, so that's a huge compliment because I, I love her. Yeah. Uh, well, I think you're in similar terrain. I wanna say hi, we've had a few people just join us. Um, there may have been a ticket snafu because uh, about 10 minutes ago, I got a flurry of orders for tickets. So um, I've just sent the link out to all of you and thank you for joining us. Um, my guest is Leah Koloff. This is the Secret City Salon, a monthly salon of the Secret City where we connect artists to community and we expose our community to some of the extraordinary artists and performers that um, have been part of our work for many years. And Leah is a longstanding stalwart and much beloved member of our community. We are talking about her music and her work and uh, let's hear another song, okay, Leah?
And um, if you have anything you'd like to ask Leah, um, just you know, say in the chat, I have a question or I'd like to say something. And then at our next break, we'll um, bring you in as they say. Um, this is Heart in a Sack. And this is off of your previous solo album, um, right? Dark, Sweet, Heart. Um, this is Heart in a Sack. Take it away, Leah. Oh, so great. That is Heart in a Sack. Um, Leah Koloff's uh, first solo album is called Dark Sweet 
heart. And that is a song about her dog, Mr. Harris, right? Yeah. It really captures that love and the playfulness of just being out on the street, right? And kind of being pulled along by the dog. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's probably the, 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 the greatest love song I've written so far. Wow. <laughs> to Mr. Harris. I loved, I loved him so much. I mean, I think, still think about him all the time. And I just want to do that song. I mean, I've seen so many people with, you know, new dogs during the pandemic. You know, people have been adopting animals, which is fantastic. Um, they bring such joy. Oh, right. I mean, I know you know, Sally. Yeah, yeah we know, we know. Um, as you were performing, you know, I mentioned this in my intro. Um, and I love this because it's on your website. I love how you mentioned that you coined your own term for the kind of music that you play, clunk, which yeah. is um, classical punk. And I was thinking as you were playing you know, I think so much about the life of the artist is the outsider, right? And that art kind of helps us find a, a thing to be inside, right? But yeah. I wondered, you then though, still kind of remained outside of the art, of the art that you were sort of moved into, right? And what, what has that I know this is a big question, but what has that been like creating your own, your, a singular voice and a singular talent? And what has that been like finding that way for you? Well, I think, you know, originally when I was, I decided, you know, cause I, I went to conservatory, I was playing classical music I stopped playing music for almost five years because I just, I did theater actually. Uh, I want, I, I was yearning for more self-expression, I think. I, I, I wanted to exercise more control over what I was creating. And uh, so, which is, you know, classical music, you know, playing somebody else's music. I mean, and then even in theater, auditioning and having to be a type and you know so I felt such freedom when I started writing songs I was like oh my god it was so exciting um and I think in some ways it has been frustrating because I'm like sort of an outsider you know I even the music I write on my own is not mainstream it's you know it's very eccentric it took me a while to realize like that it was actually really eccentric and I wasn't necessarily um, going to be on, on the radio, you know, um, but it's, uh, but also, it's what you know, comes I've, out of you though. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've tried to write things that are more mainstream and they just always sound like me. They're just always <laughs> like kind of weird. Maybe part of that is that I, I generally write on the cello um i think if i wrote on a different instrument it would it would there would uh it, it, there would be a difference but i think also too it's that i just have you know i, I have this classical background and, and you know i mean i don't know it is it's just what comes out of me but i definitely there was a period of time where i wanted to be in a punk band and a lot of the other music on my first album is very aggressive like you know i've written a lot of aggressive music you know, I really, uh, have you mellowed? I think I have, I have, <laughs> um, part of me hasn't. I mean, I definitely really like that right now. I feel like, you know, I've been thinking about what am I going to do next? And I've really just been having this urge to write music that brings comfort to people mm. that would, you know, give people a sense of, peacefulness and uh you know solace solace yeah that's i really have the urge to 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 create that so i think you know that's going to be my next uh you know, my next work i think i'm 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 going to try that um, those are the devotionals you mentioned is that right yeah i have yeah. this idea that it devotional to be to 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 yeah devotionals to be i love that to, i love that word 
I do too. I, and I, I love the thought of being devoted to, <laughs> yeah, um, right. But, you know, being devoted to, to life, you know, devoted to yeah. one's life, devoted to the people in one's life, devoted to um, the art in one's life, devoted to each other. I mean, yeah. there's something about this time that, um, you know, it's so difficult, yet there's been also so much beauty. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the connectedness that we, that, that is absolutely real to me and, and has been shown to be so true. It, yeah. It's, is, um, yeah, I just, I feel like I want to honor that. Um, hey, before we um, get too far away, I want to remind people, um, it's the Secret City Salon, and our guest is Leah Koloff. We, uh, Karen is just sharing a slide, um, and um, Leah's Venmo is on there, her virtual tip jar. If you would like to uh, tip Leah, please use her Venmo um, if you want to throw some cash Leah's way. Uh, one of the one of the purposes of doing these salons for us is to provide support to artists and performers who have been so hard hit by the pandemic and the shutdown. And so uh, obviously uh, the tip jar will go to Leah uh, completely and we split all of the um, ticket sales with the performers. So thank you for being here and thank you for supporting this program and supporting artists. Um, Hey, Leah, let's play another song, okay? I think it's okay. time to play the next Lucibel Crater song. This is another recording which Karen will play for us. Um, Into the Bushes is the name of the song. And once again, the, fan, uh, the title of that album was The Family Album. Um, and we'll be back after this with more conversation with Leah. Thank you.
That was Into the Bushes off of Lucibel Crater, the family album, uh, Leah's band. And uh, Leah was in that band when we first met, still had that band. Um, what's it like listening to that music now for you? Um, I love this record. I do. You know, um, it's interesting because I made it with my ex who was part of like if you saw the show this tree like I talk about him and the difficulty with him and I was making this record when I was actually trying to get pregnant and that you know anyway so there's a lot there for me emotionally but I I really um I I I, I still enjoy listening to it actually because uh it was um it was such a good collaboration between the three of us that, uh, you know, I have fond memories of making the music. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a common sort of quick take that, <clears throat> that you know, that that kind of music with that kind of feeling could be sort of easily can categorized as angry. Do you think of that as angry music? Um, well, that song is, uh, I guess I decided to play it because it does, you know, it has that rock, you know, although that's the cello, which is like the distorted, it's, that's actually a cello, which I also love, but, um, that's kind of an angry song. It, it's, um, it's sarcastic and angry. Um, it was actually called Into the Bushes because it, I wrote it during the Bush years. <laughs> and uh, so it was called Into the Bushes. And, you know, the, the lyrics are, um, don't bury the hatchet, uh, cut down the tree instead, uh, you know, basically walking off. I, I think I wrote it in, in response to you know, flat earthers and people denying science and um, this idea of, you know, this lack of respect for, um, for the earth, basically, yeah. you know, that and, and, you know, I remember thinking, oh, well, I guess, you know, this isn't, I guess this, you know, maybe this song isn't really relevant into the book, you know, but unfortunately, it, it when I listened to it again, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually yeah. It's... Un unfortunately, perhaps this era has not gotten much easier or brighter. Hey, we have a question from Jonas. Jonas is here. And Jonas said, Leah, how much do you think your painful journey influences your songwriting? Um, well, first of all, I would say, like, I don't, I don't think my... I don't think I've had a more painful journey than ever and, and than anyone else. I mean, I think that being human, there's pain. And uh, um, I've, you know, in many respects, I've had, I've, you know, I've had, a, I've had a great journey um, with difficulties, you know, I mean, I don't have some of the things that I thought I would have. Um, you know, my life didn't turn out like I thought it would. And I, you know, that's like, that's the story of being human, really. Um, mm. And uh, that's a lot of what this tree was about, that journey of coming to terms with, uh, with things not, your life not being what you thought it was going to be. And how do you deal with that? Um, and I think a lot of the songs that I wrote, particularly for, for this tree, were really grappling with, um, with how I got to the place where I am now and the choice, you know, the choices that I made and yeah. So, I mean, of course my life, it has influenced, uh, of course it influences the songwriting and, and, uh, what you're creating for yeah. sure. Yeah. I'm sure very much. You can hear that and feel it. Um, Hey, let's, let's have another song. You're going to play another song. Yeah. Um, this is sweetness. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, if you have a question for Leah, you can either just write in the chat, you can write the question or you can say, I have a question and we'll bring you in on video and you can ask it yourself. Um, all right. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. And Leah, um, take it away.
wonders my other my twin she is Oh, I just love that song. Don't you love that song, Leah? <laughs> That's actually, it's one of my favorite songs that I've written. <laughs> I've written. Yeah. Uh, I think mostly because I just really love, um, I feel like I, I use the cello really well in this one. <laughs> I mean, I just love the open, the open C and open G string on the cello. It's like the best sound ever. Mm. You know, just like the... Yeah. Is that, are those the ones that you feel like, you know, some, like there's a deep inner satisfaction, like a warmth of humanity feeling? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. The sound. Yeah. I mean, in those, I mean, I think the cello has that sound, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's just this warm, comforting sound, which, you know, I was sort of, I mean, it's such a versatile instrument. And uh, that song, I think, really uses the warmth of the instrument. Yeah. Um, and I think, I, you know, I've been interested. We were talking about it before. I'm, I'm, I wasn't, in, you know, when I was younger, I was interested in, like, being kind of aggressive and, like, rawr, like the cello can rock, too. Yeah. And uh, now I feel like I, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to, to give that to people, that, the warmth of the cello. 
The comfort yeah, of it. it's I love that in the you know the journey of being an artist where you have these great desires to like break things or make something new or make something radical. And then by the time you get to sort of midlife and even deeper in the midlife, things start to sort of sift, right? And I guess I say that because it is radical. Like the way you're using the cello, it it still retains the spirit of your kind of adventurous pursuit, right? It hasn't lost its punk roots, I guess, even though it's not necessarily a punk sound. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't, uh, I think everything, you know, like I, I, there's, I, I think there's more of an edge to me than I ever, than I think I, I, uh, ever really want to admit in a way, like it's just there. Like I don't actually have to manufacture it. I think, I think there was a point where I, I really felt like I had to manufacture it. And now I'm just like, yeah, no, I don't think so. I yeah, think no, it. I had an acting teacher back when I was in my 20s and he said, you know, you sit at a you sit at a stoplight and watch someone cross the street, everything about them falls out. And it's like whatever is in you falls out as an artist, right? It's like who you are will be revealed whether you're pushing it or not, right? Yeah. We'll get it. Yeah, I think um well, a lot of my work has had a certain kind of like um, sarcasticness or actually like I think it's funny, like dark humor, black uh -huh. humor, you know. Um, yeah. But there's real poetry like that song has such I mean, I love the title is the sweetness and it has such sweetness. And and then that ending, that long extended ending of those descending notes is so it's so moving. It's really beautiful. Thanks. Yeah, well, this, that, I mean, that song is very, is really about searching for your, and being led by your best self. Mm. Knowing that there's, you know, that that's there. Mm. And, you know, guiding you and, and pulling you towards, um, towards, towards better things for yourself. I love that. I, I, I love that journey too. Hey, I just want to point out, um, I want to make sure if people are commenting in the chat, make sure that you're chatting to everyone. Sometimes your chat notes may be going privately to one individual. If you want to send your, your notes to all of us, make sure you select everyone in that blue bubble at the top of your, where it says two colon, select everyone and then we'll all see your chats your your notes and your comments um okay thanks everyone i love the comments i really appreciate that i know it's really great it's, it's so uh it's so sweet and you know nice for me at this moment in time because i haven't been performing much i mean a little bit you know people are starting but it's so nice to be here with everyone. Yeah, I know. It's a nice opportunity to have performance. Um, hey, uh, let's do another song. Um, this song, Brief Earthly Stay, <clears throat> this will be our last song, um, is off of the album This Tree, and it was the last song in the show, This Tree, um, that was the music theater piece that Leah made inspired by that album of songs. Uh, the first song she did this evening was the title song. And now this is the last song in the show, <clears throat> Brief Earthly Stay. Um, <clears throat> we'll chat a little more once this song is over. Um, take it away, Leah. Okay. I just wanna say this, uh, this song was uh, taken directly from a dream that I had about my family. Um, I feel like I might hit this, hopefully not. <laughs> Together again 
psychedelic land And I can't feel the love And I can't feel the love And I can't feel the love that bonds us And I know we'll be okay We go swimming in an ocean of multicolored waves it's a beautiful potion of colorful emotion And I can feel the love And I can feel the love And I can feel the love that bonds us And I know we'll be okay High cliffs of green grass reach down to the water we lean over the edge in trusting wonder. It's a radiant nave when the waves are concave. In summits of red, yellow, green, orange, and blue. And I can feel the love and I can feel the love and I can feel the love that bonds us and I know we'll be okay we were meant to be together for this brief earthly stay for this brief earthly stay for this brief earthly stay I can feel the love and I can feel the love and I can feel the love that bonds us and I know we'll be okay we were meant to be together for this brief earthly stay 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 brief earthly Mm. So great. How does it feel performing that song? Can I mean, can you tell how it feels or is it just like, oh, I'm executing this thing or no, what's the experience I, it's, like? Um, no, it's definitely a song that I live inside of when I'm I, when I'm singing it. You know, I really um, I really do. It 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 kind of takes me over. Um, yeah, cause it, it's, um, because it's so much, it's, it's what I feel, you know, it's like this, um, yeah, it's a very vulnerable song because it, it really is, you know, it's, we're here for this brief earthly stay and I can feel the love, you know, um. I can feel the love. So, you know, really written about my family in this dream where I did, I just felt uh, so connected to my family mm. and, and the love that's there. And um, was it, would you say, was it a healing dream? It was very healing. It was incredibly yeah. psychedelic too. It was just this psychedelic dream where we were mm. like swimming in the ocean and <laughs> like letting, like holding each other, like leaning over these cliffs. Um, and it's funny because uh, I've been, I've actually been putting together all of these regular eight movies that my dad made. I've been putting them into like one long movie to share with relatives. And, um, and I know why that dream, why we were at the, like, there's so much footage of us at the ocean. Like, there we are at the beach again. There we are. At the, you know. So, um, yeah. Uh, 
yeah i just you know like that i think those those times are just you know have made an indelible impression on me that's what i you know i just dreamed about us being together at the beach so beautiful and evocative i love that i love that description of it it's was psychedelic i can i can feel that in the music yeah um, all these colors like yeah you know just um yeah, it was, uh, and I think this was after my dad had died. So this dream was after that and we were there together. So it was very, it was a lovely dream that just stuck with me um, for so long. I finally put it into a song. Yeah, and it, and it, you know, I, I, I really liked about my show, if you can, that it started so dark and and it ended with such love. And I really, I wanted that to be the journey. Um, I want, and, and in the process of making the show, I kind of had to find that journey as well. Um, you know, it's sort of the journey that I set up for myself, but it, it wasn't really apparent how I was gonna get there until I really, I had to really work through the show in order to get to that ending. Um, yeah. But but that was on the album. It was on the album. And so it was like, it, it was interesting because it was like, okay, so this is the journey I want to take. But I, 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 but I had to actually, um, in the process of writing the show that I did, that's when I actually got to that end. Uh, you figured out how to sort of, it, like the narrative of the show led you to how the song how it led to the song to that song being the ending yeah you could feel that yeah it was almost like I'd written this record of songs and when I decided to to make a theater piece out of it which just sort of came to me I think that I was really searching for the story that got that from that first song to the last song like what is that how can I express that? And, you know, the songs in, in between um, were, a, were a guide. Uh -huh. But I didn't, f yeah, I think that the wanting, wanting to create theater out of it was really wanting to, to find that journey. Mm, that's beautiful. I love that. It's like the songs were sort of the landmarks, right? But then making exactly. a show out of them kind of created the, the journey you walked in between, like to connect the songs, yeah? Yes, exactly, yeah, which which was not conscious on my part. Mm. I don't think I realized it until I was in the process of actually making. making well, it. you you are obviously dealing on a lot of different levels of consciousness. So there's some consciousness perhaps that was leading you, whether it was consciousness you were awake to or aware of, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's yeah. sort of the creative process. Yeah. Right? I mean, we you just start doing something, you're not exactly sure why and the clarity comes later. <laughs> you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, that's, that's what's exciting about it, I think. Hey, anybody um, have anything they'd like to ask Leah or anything they'd like to say to Leah? Before we wrap up? There's a bunch of beautiful comments in the chat section. Yeah, I'm just wondering if anybody wants to ask a question or um, say something um, at this moment, so we don't have to read the chat so much. Yeah. But is there sorry, anybody I, um... who wants to come in and ask anything? <clears throat> sorry, Leah, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say um, uh, a friend of mine came and was mentioning my friend Leah. I had a friend Leah who passed away. Oh. Uh... Um, was that in July or August? Uh, but, uh, you know, it was nice to be reminded of her. Uh, mm. Yeah. Leah. Hey. She's here. Um, maybe, um, maybe you have one more song. Do you have one more song? Remember um, that song you did for the service, that Nick Drake song? Yeah, I can do that. I could do that. Let's see. Um, 
Yeah. So um, for our last Sunday um, service of the Secret City, oh, I should an, I should make these announcements before you do the last song. One moment, Leah, forgive me. Okay. Do um, so um, we, the Secret City is a nonprofit arts organization that creates community through the arts. Uh, Leah, as I said at the top, has been a wonderful part of our community for many, many years. The Salon series is monthly and uh, it focuses on a, an artist or performer from our community. Um, next Salon will be November 19th. That's a month, I believe it's a month from tonight. Um, and our guest will be Bobby Lucy, who's the co-founder of The Secret City and a wonderful visual artist. So I hope you'll plan to come back and be with us for um, a presentation and a conversation with Bobby about his art and his work and his life. And um, I want to remind people that if you'd like to toss some coins in Leah's tip jar, you can find her on Venmo, Leah Koloff. Oh, uh, thank you, Karen. Karen just put the slide up with the um, address there. And uh, Let's have one more song. Oh, so this was the Nick Drake song that Leah played at our last um, Sunday service. And uh, what's the album? It's off of Pink Moon, right? It's off of Pink Moon. It's called From yeah. the Morning. Such Beautiful. A, yeah. yeah, such a great okay. song. Okay, take it away. Thank you. So great, Leah, really. Thanks. You know, I want to really say before we wrap up, you you also have a real gift for a cover. Such a gift for covers. Leah played at Bobby's and my wedding and she performed uh, Till There Was You, which of course the Beatles covered, but it originally came from the musical, The Music Man. And it's one of my favorite performances uh, and favorite musical performances ever. And I was reminded of that as you were playing this. Um, thank you so much, Leah Koloff, for being so wonderful and for sharing your talent with all of us tonight.
It's great oh, thank you time for asking you me to do this. This was really such a, a pleasure for me. So, so good to play for people. Yay. It was so nice. Really, I appreciate everyone showing up and listening. Listen yeah, and I want to say thank you uh, to the uh, everyone who uh, makes this made this salon possible. Uh, uh, Eric, who came early to help out, Emily, who came early to help out, and most especially Karen Schleifer, who is our producer and our engineer, and is making all of our online programming work so fantastically well. And there she is in her Yay. disco disco light diva ness. <laughs> This is how we do studio stuff for Secret City. <laughs> thank you, dear Karen, and thank you, Leah. And um, you mentioned the chat, Karen. I it suddenly realized we should save the chat for Leah so that we, she can. We will read save it. everything, yeah. and it's recorded, and all okay. that good stuff for Great. sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful night and a beautiful weekend. Thank you, everyone. Yay! And thank thanks you, to our Secret City. Members, Patreon members, thank you. We love you. Great I having you here tonight. I, I just want to say quickly before we go, it's been yeah. it's been such a pleasure for me to be a part of the Secret City. Aww. I mean, it's it's been such a uh, it's such an amazing community, and you know, like it's it's given me so much. So so I have so much gratitude. Yeah, likewise, for... it's been a beautiful relationship. Thank yeah. you. The journey. Yeah. It's yep. amazing. Thank you, my dear. Good night, everybody. Thanks for being here. Bye. Thank you. Bye.